and how's everybody doing? Right. Everybody's good? Yes. All right, I am too. I want to first say that um, it's just great to see so many young people out here. And um, in general, the way this nation is, uh, the rhythm of this nation is conflict and confrontation. And I do harmonious and productive communication workshops. And my goal is to travel throughout the city of Hartford in these high schools, the state of Connecticut, and eventually the country, talking about harmonious and productive communication. So, um, and we need it. And I just wanted to put that out there. Tonight, I want to share a poem that I wrote as a tribute to black women. This is Black History Month, and so, I'm gonna share that poem with you. It's called, For You There Are No Words. I see you. I see you, this beautiful black female work of art. And with all my heart, I want to free you from all the mental anguish and pain of watching we be these little boys as we play with our little toys, guns, cars, clothes, money, jewelry, and the rest of our worthless boy joys. You watch and you wait while it's our own people we continue to destroy and hate. But in order to free you, I must see you with more than just my eyes, but with my mind. And I must be kind with more than just my words, but with my actions. And I must become that African man with more than just perseverance and inner searching, but with the help of the creator, the same one that made you. I know I can, I must earn your trust because your history has determined that you have earned the right to be free. And it is my responsibility to evolve to manhood and see that you live with peace, harmony, and prosperity. Amen. I feel you more than I ever thought I could because there was a time I never thought I would. It is not a physical thing, but a spiritual feeling that comes with listening to my consciousness and the stress becomes less and less. And because this is just a quest, I repeat, because this is just a quest to quell the unruly seed that fuels the unruly need for greed, I cannot rest until I relieve myself from this mess. And my mental fights with Rome become mental rights. And before long, my mental lights come on and I finally begin to see it as only you, this beautiful black queen who can truly make me happy. I smell you. I smell you and think of all that is good as the aroma stopped me right where I stood and I began to wish that I could and should be the best man that I can. At the wedding, at the park, when it's dark, in the light, as long as I'm in anyone's sight, I just smell you and to your delight, I want to do all that is right. Come on, sir. All day and all night and there will be no fights because you'll have the green light and I will follow and wish that you'll still call me after last night. I hope it's today, cause I'll be crazy by tomorrow, cause when I smell you, I feel so good. I worship you because I know without you there would be no we. From before slavery to after BET, there would be no blues, bojangles, or tap shoes, no jazz or hip hop, no rap, Missy P. Diddy or Biggie, no rock and roll, James Brown, reggae, soca, Tupac, or soul, no R&B, MTV, or Muhammad Ali, no soccer, tennis, or basketball shorts, cause there would be no sports. No Malcolm, Martin, and Marcus, and there would be no history or ancestors for us. No Rosa, Harriet, or Fanny. Black man, what is it going to take for us to see that this beautiful black woman in our midst is responsible for everything that is, can be, and what we see? Because here on earth, the true representation of the creator, it is she. When I hold you, there's a feeling of numbness, followed by warmth, passion, and then dumbness. Because I know I have become less than my ancestor's definition of a true African man. One who makes a stand and takes control of himself, embraces Africa and puts that European history on the shelf. Builds a family on a foundation of morals, 
values and principles that are never compromised, pays no attention to those who ridicule and criticize, forever strives to become more conscious and wise, instructs young kings and queens that with knowledge of self, precious goals and dreams can be realized. He defines his own wants, needs, and desires, creates his own businesses, and is his family, including those who look like and support him, he hires. Yes, a true African man passes the test, the knowledge, and all his best down to the next generation so that once he retires, the family's quality of life continues to rise higher and higher and higher and so on and so on and so on. And so as I attempt to put into practice what has been said, I repeat this knowledge over and over again in my head so that when again I hold you, I feel complete. I will protect you until the death. Until long after I take my final breath. And yes, this implies until there are no more compromises, blue skies, sunrises or surprises. No birds, bees or trees. Until the lies, the lust, the line light and the lawsuit loot is gone. Till there are no more sad songs and loving you is right and not wrong. Until all oceans and seas become sand and dry land and just remnants of what was once man. Until the idea of hot and cold become ancient stories only told by those more than 10,000 years old. Until it takes more than putting a hole in my tongue, private parts of face to be bold. Until the final race, the final chase, and the last lawyer's last case. Until all ghettos become boardwalk and park place and all wicked and evil people disappear without a trace. Until the last supper, revelations and the resurrection. I, from now until, will be your protection. And finally, I just want to get to know you, get to show you how much I owe you the right to relax when I come your way and not turn to your girlfriends and say, here comes another sorry brother ready to wreck my day. I want you to feel like flowers greeting the sun or when the mortgage payments are done. Like the smell of fresh, hot, buttered popcorn or when that first child is born. I want you to toot my horn, to see me as a breath of fresh air. Make all your friends stop and stay in our direction because our connection is the right one. Our relationship is a tight one. I am yours and yes, you are my one and only. And even when I am not there, you are never lonely. Even when I am not there, you are never lonely because your thoughts of me take you to ecstasy. Until again, I am there for you to see, pleased with my presence to the extent that I too am pleased to be present. And mutual feelings are so intense, it makes no sense to be this doggone confident. I just wanna see what you want me to be. And if it makes us both happy, and you finally trust me, and I am worthy, I don't know, we'll see, but maybe, just maybe, one day you'll marry me. That's for you that I know words. Thank you.